good morning. Welcome to the video. Bean and I would like to introduce you to this video. Um, all about all pastels. So, what do you say? He's not used to being outside, so he's a bit distracted. Anyway, this video. Really? Whatever. This video is all about the Paul Rubens set of 72 oil pastels. Paul Rubens sent me this set um, and asked if I would like to review it and if I would like to have a go at playing around with them and let them know what I think. Uh, so this isn't sponsored by them, but they did give the set to me as a gift. Uh, but my opinions are my own and I'm just going to let you know what I think of them. Um, I haven't used oil pastels a lot, but the brand that I'm used to using is... Um, see if I can pronounce this properly. Selenier? Selenier? Selenia? I think that's what it's called. Butchering the name, but that's okay. Um, that's the brand that I'm usually used to using. But um, yeah, I thought I'd give a crack at these and see what I think of them. And yeah. Okay, so this is this set of 72 oil pastels by Paul Rubens. Now I am familiar with Paul Rubens um, but I've never used any of their products before so this is a first for me. Uh, I have used oil pastels for quite a few many years but I'm definitely not an oil pastel expert. I'm just going to show you how I use oil pastels and you know you can take that as it is. <laughs> uh, but yeah this set was sent to me a few weeks ago. It's been waiting patiently for me to have the time to uh, have a really good play and review and so it's finally I finally got around to recording. Uh, the set is it comes in um, a few different size sets actually. This is the 72 one, but there's a few different sizes available. It obviously has a color sheet in here that shows all the colors in each set. And uh, the box is really nice and sturdy as well. And the um, packaging is really lovely. So my experience with all pastels, I have been using them for quite a few years, but not exclusively, obviously. I'm mostly a acrylic painter, but I do enjoy all pastels. Uh, they are a bit messy to work with, but not as messy as chalk pastels and soft pastels. I cannot stand soft pastels. The, um, the texture of it drives me nuts. So I would much rather use an oil pastel over a soft pastel. So it does come with a um, swatching chart. Um, I wasn't going to bother swatching them all, but since it comes with a swatching chart, maybe I should. <laughs> just, you know, why not? Um, otherwise, I'll just be doing it in a sketchbook. So I guess I'll, you know, swatch all the colours out and see what I think about them straight out of the box. So these are all the colours swatched out. Let's see if I can get a, a close up. The consistency of them all is pretty good. I found some of them to be a bit softer than others. Um, see how this is a bit more opaque and this is a bit transparent? That was because this is a, it seemed a little bit scratchier than that one, a bit smoother. But besides that, they were all pretty much consistent. Like some of them are a bit thicker, but then it, it maybe just I maybe I just pushed a bit harder on here than here. I don't know. I wasn't really paying that much attention. But um, color wise, it's a really good selection of brights and muted colors. Um, there's lots of like you know really high vibrant colors, but then there's also muted versions that you can kind of blend them out with. Um, warms and cools. There's a good mixture of warms and cools. Um, yeah, it's, I don't know, it seems like a pretty good colour range, really. So what I'm going to do with these to sort of test them out a bit more thoroughly rather than just swatching is um, I'm going to go over a watercolour that I have. So this is a watercolour that I did of some tulips, but I kind of messed up the values a little bit. I should have made these much lighter, um, but I went too dark too quickly. And so now they get very lost in the background. 
So one of the ways that I like to use oil pastel is actually over the top of either acrylic paintings or um, watercolour paintings. Like this, for example, this is an acrylic painting and I've come over the top of it with uh, oil pastel to do some highlights and some details. Same with this here. So um, you can kind of use like acrylic as an underpainting, or in this case, I'm going to use the watercolor that I already have as an underpainting. Uh, and I'm going to build up the artwork with oil pastel instead of continuing with watercolor, because I think I've kind of gone to the point where I can't really rescue this with watercolor, um, because once watercolor, once you've gone too dark, you can't go back with it unless you start adding gouache. So, um, so I'm going to use this as my sort of underpainting, and I'm going to use the oil pastels to build up on top of it. All right, so I'm going to start with the shadows. I'm just going to create um, some sort of perfectly colours in the shadows. And if I wasn't going to swatch all the pastels, I'm glad I did because now I can actually look at them and decide which ones are actually going to work um, for what I want. So I need. Um, are they actually labelled? Hang on. Yes, yes, you are labelled. Okay. So I actually want this one. So oil pastel is, you can kind of use it in a few different ways, depending on the effect that you're trying to get. Um, you can layer it in a similar way to oil paint. So that's why I'm sort of starting with darks. And I'm going to treat like every single... Um, <laughs> stroke of the oil pastel as if it's a stroke of my brush. So instead of just coming in and scribbling randomly, I'm going to make sure that I do pay a bit more attention to the direction of my marks. And I'm going to interchange between a few different colors on top of each other. And I'm going to build up the color that way rather than just jumping straight in and yeah, scribbling and covering everything. Because you can you can layer oil pastel, but it doesn't work as well as actual oil paint does. Um, so you kind of like, you, you kind of, you can work in a way that is similar to working thick to thin, or you can just do like really thin lines of color and build everything up that way. So that's what I'm choosing to do. So I've just got three different uh, values of purple. Looking at this now, um, I have noticed that they do lack, um, like there's no lavender color. Like these are the three purples and they're all quite dark. So most of the other cooler blues, yeah, I suppose you can kind of blend them. That's like the, that's probably the closest to lavender sort of color. It would be nice to have something in between these three that is like a cool purple, like a pale purple, a pastel purple, if that makes sense. Like in like the color, not the fact that it's pastel. <laughs> but these might have to do. So I might put that one back because I think that's a little dark maybe. Anyway, I'm just going to go around anywhere that I see this dark sort of shadow that I've laid in. I'm just going to use these dark purples and create and emphasize the shadow. So that's what I'm going to do to start with.
go around to all the other dark areas that I can see, like the um, some of these darker stems and down in where the shadows are of the greens with this darker green. Anywhere that I can see dark. And I'm also going to start to bring in the soil because um, these tulips were in like a really rich red soil. And so I want to kind of bring in some of that color too. So I've just got the three different browns here. Again, I'm just going to really loosely just create marks anywhere that I want this soil color to be. I don't want to just block it all into solid, uh, one solid color because that would make it a really boring painting to look at as far as texture goes. So you want to kind of make it like looking at a painterly painting. <laughs> the oil pastel is going to give it a similar effect um, as, you know, a really painterly expressionist impressionism slash, you know, kind of painting. Anywhere it's dark, I'm going to do that darker red. Where there's a little bit more light happening, I'm going to use the paler brown. And then this darker green in some of the dark green areas as well. I just want to establish all my darks first before I get too carried away with any of the other colours. It's like putting together like a, a collage or a mosaic made up of lots of little little marks and different colours. It's one kind of the best way to describe it. Instead of just blocking in solid patches, you want to just add little marks of each colour and just keep building up and building up and building up until the puzzle is all together and finished.
So now I'm just going to start slowly working around um, building up these flowers or these tulips um, by doing the same thing as the leaves. I'm just going to build up the lights and darks. I've already put white around the edges of some of these petals just to remind me where the light should be. I'm just going to continue just alternating between a couple of different um, yellow colours. Um, this is quite a darker colour. I'm finding these are really, these pastels, um, they're really nice actually. They're very, I would say, very similar in consistency to the um, Selenier pastels, which is what I'm used to working with and using. Um, you know, you can push quite hard and get some really thick, creamy marks with them, and you can also use them quite. Um, soft and gently and get some less prominent marks so they're quite versatile um, there's a little bit of inconsistency in that that um, softness so for example this one that I just used on here is very soft and this one is a little bit hard so in order to get that you know effect of the really chunky pastel I have to push a lot harder on this color than I did that color so there's a little bit of inconsistency in that but it's not really a big issue I would say that's just something worth noting but yeah as far as quality goes I would definitely put them in the same range as the Selenier pastels which are quite a high-end oil pastel um, they are quite expensive um, they're like usually at least three sometimes four dollars each so um, if you think about it as far as you know value for money goes <laughs> these are very similar you know I'm not going to say that they're exactly the same but they are very similar they are really soft and squishy which not oil pastels are especially cheaper oil pastels often you'll get um, they'll be really crayony like coloring in with like children's crayons and scratchy uh, rather than soft like this but these ones are definitely quite soft, which is um, really nice to work with. So I am quite impressed by that side of it. So I'm just going around and putting some white highlights where I think it needs it. build up some different variations in color those so I might need a maybe more of an apricot color for the center parts maybe I need to kind of define the center a bit better that's, that's a bit better because they are a bit darker in the middle so maybe a bit of that um okay a bit of a shadow color So I'm just making sure that I work around the um, the piece as well. So I'm not just focusing on like one part. I'm actually working a few different areas at once to build up values evenly. So I'm not really focusing too much on one area over um, any other area. Because I don't want it to have anything that sort of sticks out that's um, overwhelming to anything else. This is a really nice 
nice color too it's like a a turquoisey color it makes for a nice bluish shadow some stronger highlights on some of these leaves that are hitting the sun. So if you push really hard on the pastel, you can create these little chunks of color, which is very similar to, you know, using a thick oil paint. A few highlights on the dirt, maybe. Make sure I get like right in here too, where there's patches of dirt, because it sort of helps with the negative space. Maybe I add some more of this red into the actual dirt shadow, because it's very strong with that purple this is where you can kind of start to blend colors together okay so that's like the shadow of that leaf I need to make sure some of these shadows make sense too okay, I think it's time to get some really dark shadow marks and things happening in some of these areas just to boost up the contrast a little bit This isn't black, this is like a really dark, um, I would say it's Prussian blue, that's what it says, and yes, I would agree with that, this is very much a Prussian blue. It's nice just to add a few really dark highlights in here. Just gonna go around some of the edges of these marks. I don't want to see too much of the the paper showing through underneath. I'm gonna make sure that I cover the drawing in quite a thick layer. You can, of course, use your finger to blend and smudge these colours together, but I kind of like it a bit more brush strokey and bitsy. I don't like to blend them too much. I kind of prefer to have them looking a little bit more um, painterly. I guess that's the word you sort of use for, to describe that this kind of style. Now the thing with oil pastel that you have to remember is that it's never going to dry. So with oil paint, obviously after a while, the paint will set and it will dry and it can be, you know, framed and touched and varnished and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, with oil pastel, it will never fully dry. So it's always going to be tacky. Even if you use a fixative, uh, it's always going to be uh, wet. So some a painting like this uh, will have to be framed behind glass so that you can't have you know, people touching it. 
otherwise it will eventually smudge um, and also if it collects dust it's very hard to remove the dust obviously because the paint is always a little wet so that's the one one of the downsides of using oil pastel as a a medium uh, for finished artworks uh, it's just a little limiting in the surfaces you can use it on and also the way it's sort of displayed in the end uh, because yeah you can't really have it displayed on like a canvas for example or or a board and then have it you know just hanging on the wall <laughs> it has to be framed behind glass so that's that's the only thing you need to really keep in mind if you're going to sort of pursue playing around with oil paint but besides that you know it's you can yeah you still use it you just have to keep that in mind like it's not it's not a permanently set medium it's always going to have a little bit of um give in it and it's always going to have a little bit of wetness to it it's never really going to dry so i'm just trying to find some areas that need little some little pops of something and this lighter purple would be nice in some of the shadows this is like a really nice contrast the light purple and the yellow push quite hard on some of these areas to get a bit of thicker paint where the tulips are a stem here as well. I think maybe we'll make it come down here. It's coming in behind that one. So here is the final oil painting done with oil pastels. Can you see the incredible texture that you can get? If I hold that on a bit of an angle, see those thick chunky bits? You can only do that with a good quality oil pastel. If your oil pastel is more like a crayon, if it's a really cheap um, crayon and waxy pastel, it's not going to have that. Um, painterly mark making ability it's just not gonna work so I have to say I'm very very impressed with these Paul Rubens oil pastels they um, stand up really nicely they don't they haven't none of them have broken in my hands yet either because you do have to sometimes push quite hard and often that will snap these but they haven't broken none of them not a single one um, and I'm used to using the Selenier brand of oil pastel and I would say that these are very very similar in quality uh, the colors are really bright and uh, there's a huge range as well like I only use like these are all the ones in the box that I didn't even touch um, these are all the ones that I use for this particular painting but there is a huge variety of colors lots of warms and cools and I am yeah super stoked so yeah for me it is a definite thumbs up uh, so yeah, that's my, that's my final opinion and thank you for joining me with this little review.